what do the degrees associated with your scoliosis mean? In a scoliosis examination, a lot of patients are told a degree of curvature, you know, like a 20, 30, 40, 50 degree curvature. And a lot of times they don't understand what does this degree of curvature actually means. Well, a scoliosis is a unnatural sideways spinal curvature. And it means the spine is actually bending from the left to right or right to the left. Also, scoliosis has a rotational 3D component or a twist associated with it. You must have both things in order for it to be called scoliosis. You need to have a curve and also a turn and twist. The, the measurement is referring to something called a Cobb angle. And this Cobb angle measurement in order for it to be called scoliosis needs to be 10 degrees or greater. Now, what is a Cobb angle? A Cobb angle is a measurement that's taken during an X-ray. It's the most common way. It's an X-ray is by far the most accurate way. and involves drawing intersecting lines from the topmost tilted vertebra to the bottom most tilted vertebra. And so therefore you have a bottom bone that's tilted like this and you have a top bone tilted this way. And it will be intersecting these lines that will give you an angle. And you're supposed to pick the most tilted to most tilted and, and measure this angle. This angle will be expressed in degrees relative to severity of the scoliosis. So you are measure either five, 10, 15, 20, 30 degree scoliosis. And again, it's comparing most tilted to most tilted, top to bottom, and measuring that in degrees. The severity levels are directly related to the size. So if a mild scoliosis is diagnosed, that would be a measurement typically between 10 and 25 degrees in the US. Now, different countries have different sizes, relative, uh, different categories relative to size. But in the US, this is what we're looking at. Between 10 and 25 degrees is what they call a mild scoliosis. A moderate scoliosis has a calm angle between 25 and 40 degrees. And a severe scoliosis is where they measure 40 degrees degrees plus. Very severe is a category as I like to use that's 80 degrees or greater. Now, unfortunately, when we look at mild, moderate, or severe, or very severe scoliosis, it doesn't necessarily tell you the severity of the impact that a patient will have as a result of the scoliosis. These categories are relative to the treatment of surgery. So what they're saying is a mild scoliosis is too mild to have surgery yet. A moderate scoliosis is too mild or too not severe enough to have surgery yet. It's not until you break severe category, meaning 40 degrees or greater, where they would consider the treatment of surgery. So the categorization of scoliosis is mostly for determining the type of treatment and the treatment that these categories are relative to is surgery. First thing we have to really understand when it comes to the, the cutting point is this thing of 10 degrees, meaning the diagnostic cutting point for scoliosis, meaning 10 degrees or greater. Does that mean that if a nine degree curve, does that mean that you don't have scoliosis? I would highly disagree because we know there is error in, in, this, in x-rays. So if you have a nine degree or an eight degree, it means that you have scoliosis. It just means you have a mild one because anytime you have a bend and a twist, in my mind, that is scoliosis. And unfortunately, we do know scoliosis can progress over time. It also, but most importantly, it helps us classify this mild, moderate, and severe, but understand the classification in this sense is relative to surgical intervention, not really relative to conservative treatment or whether the patient may be experiencing pain or discomfort or posture problems as a result of the scoliosis occurring. But what it does help us do, it does help us determine treatment plans, meaning if we know the size of the curve, if we know where you are in severity, it helps us to, to understand how we want to treat your scoliosis in terms of conservative treatment. And I also believe it helps surgeons understand what type of curve they're dealing with before they walk into treatment or walk into a recommendation of surgery. Now, one thing we have to understand when it comes to scoliosis is just because you're diagnosed with a mild curve or a moderate curve or a severe curve at this moment doesn't mean it's going to stay that way. We know scoliosis is progressive, meaning that it's more than likely going to worsen over time, especially left untreated or definitely if it's not treated proactively. Now, the degree of progression could be very, or the rate of progression could be very different from one patient to the other, but the degree also helps us determine how likely it is to progress. Mild curvatures are, can become moderate, moderate can become severe, and severe become very severe. 
the bigger your curve is, the more likely it is to progress versus smaller curves. So meaning a curve that's 10 degrees is gonna progress way slower and less likely to progress in a very small amount versus a 50 or 60 degree curve. So the size of curve is directly related to more likely how, how likely your curve is to progress. So even, therefore, if we know the bigger your curve becomes, the more likely it is to become bigger, wouldn't it make sense that we would want to treat small curves to keep them small so therefore you never have to deal with this high risk of progression? Unfortunately, traditional orthopedic treatment is not that way. Mild curves and moderate curves are very oftenly just not treated. And they said, just watch and see what happens. And very oftenly when you're watching and seeing what happens, you're seeing progression. In adolescence, these curves can progress rapidly during growth. In adults, they progress slowly because of gravity, but they still progress. And the orthopedic argument is, well, we never know if this curve has become severe enough for surgery, so why even treat it? And I understand that argument if your only treatment option is surgical fusion with rods and screws in the spine that are very invasive and can alter your life and can have very negative effects on the way your body functions. But if you have conservative treatments that are very safe, that work within, that work more naturally with the body, and it can help reduce curves and make them smaller with minimal effort and impact on the human body, well then therefore it makes sense to treat small curves before they become severe, so you're not dealing with the effects of, of having a severe scoliosis. This proactive approach to scoliosis is to purely dependent on having, having a very effective, conservative approach to scoliosis. In the orthopedic realm, when it comes to the treatment of scoliosis, conservative approaches are very limited. And normally they're just waiting for curves to become severe enough to where they can start considering surgery. We know scoliosis is a highly variable condition, meaning that there's very, very mild cases and there's moderate cases, and then there's very, very, very severe cases. And this wide range of curvature and the size is why scoliosis can have such a wide variety of effects on every single patient that's experiencing scoliosis. So therefore, the, the getting a very customized plan to meet your treatment needs and also your curve size is by far the most important thing. Here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we offer proactive customized treatment plans to deal with mild curves, moderate curves, severe curves, and very severe curves to actually deal with your goals. And most importantly, we do these treatment options in a conservative and natural approach to try to avoid the invasive treatment like scoliosis surgery and spinal fusion to try to maintain functional approaches to the spine so your spine can still move and be functional without rods and screws. So our recommendation is if you know you have scoliosis, more than likely, if you know the severity of your scoliosis as well, we always want to treat curves, whether they're mild, moderate, or severe, to prevent them from moving on to the next category of severity, because the bigger your curve gets, the more likely it's going to cause problems. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.